You're listening to Parents You've Got This, the expert guide to parenthood. The complete guide to pregnancy, birth, baby and parenthood. A big part of the nervousness we all feel as parents is not knowing what to expect in the early days and moments when our baby is born. Today we have our midwife and positive birth expert, Narelle Siroson, to talk to us all about the early moments with our newborn. Narelle Siros is a practicing midwife and a childbirth educator specializing in the Lamar's birth principles. She is also a pre and postnatal massage expert and a mother of two. Thank you so much, Narelle, for joining us today, talking about your favorite topic, birth and newborns. Yeah, no worries. So Narelle, what is typical newborn behavior in the first 12 to 24 hours? Okay, so newborns need to transition from a beautiful dark, 37 degree pool on the inside to a cooler environment on the outside where they have less boundaries. So ideally they want to be close to their parents. They know their parents, um, the, the sound of their voices. They instinctively get to know their mother's smell. They can hear, they can taste, but they need to feel safe. So I like to call it a bit of womb envy. I don't think they realize where they are and they need to come home and be close to their parents. So initially after the birth, with that rush of adrenaline that, that they'll have when they're, when they're coming out, they are wide awake. They're looking around, they're um, alert, they um, start to smell and taste and they may start initially breastfeeding within the first maybe 10, 15 minutes. Um, but they want to be safe and close to their parents. So that, that first hour is a really great opportunity to start to get to know your little one and just watch them. There's no need to intervene, just watch them. They may crawl to the breast and start feeding, um, but they want to feel close, so keep them warm. And generally after that first hour is really an opportunity for them to start to go, oh wow, I've just been born, I'm a, I'm a bit tired. So they may tend to sleep for a bit of a longer period of time, maybe a couple to two, three, four hours after birth. And then they wake up thinking, uh-huh, okay, I'm here. I need to survive, I need to feed, and I need to grow. So often there'll be a lot of opportunities here for demand feeding. Just let them go, let them be close if you're planning to breastfeed. Just let them smell you and, and feed whenever they feel ready. So you'll start to understand their little cues and their behaviors um, and just watch in awe of them. There's nothing that you really need to do except be close to your beautiful babies and just um, relax, sleep and rest and enjoy them. I think when we're um, thinking about becoming parents, we can't help but think a lot about all the nappy changes that we're going sure. to be doing. Can you talk to us a little bit about baby's early digestion and when we might do that first nappy change um, and then what that looks like? Sure. So babies, when they're on the inside, they are drinking the amniotic fluid. They're drinking the waters. So all of that is in their little tummies. When they are out in our world uh, and they start that initial feed, then what they need to do is get rid of all that amniotic fluid. So the first, you know, passing of their bowels will be, called, it's called meconium and it's black. And so if parents don't know that, they're like, whoa, what is going on? <laughs> it's so sticky. It's black and sticky and it's really normal. So we don't expect a lot from a newborn baby in their first 24 hours. We expect one wee and one poo. So with regards to nappy changes, it might be at birth that they do this. It might be two, three hours later. There's no urgency to worry about nappy changes straight away. Babies will go when they go. Uh, but, you know, generally I would suggest, you know, a few hours after birth, check a nappy. And you've got, you know, your midwives to help support you in knowing how to do that. And I think if you've never seen a nappy before, and you have to pack some for your labor and birth bags, then open one, see how it works and, and ask for help. So you don't, you're not alone with regards to nappy changes and swaddling and all those things. You've got support around you in the hospital. So ask your midwives because we love helping with all those things. What about bathing? How soon do we bath our babies? So ideally we want the amazing vernix, the amniotic fluid, all the bacteria from mum and partner and uh, their, their skin to be all over the baby. So we don't generally 
bath the baby for at least 24 hours after birth because we want all that good stuff to sink into their skin first. Um, so you don't need to worry about that initially. Again, seeking supervision and help in the hospital setting which are, from your midwives can help that. And then really your little babies, they're not that dirty. So, you know, you're going to be changing their nappies regularly, but you might find that bathing two to three times a week is plenty. What about swaddling, Narelle? Um, we've all seen the beautiful photos of the cute little babies, you know, all tucked up in blankets. Can you talk to us about swaddling and why it's suggested? Okay, so most babies like to be swaddled. And the reason is because when they're on the inside, they're in a nice compact little cave in the uterus and they have boundaries. They can, they can kick against those and they feel that they are safe in that space. And when they're out on the outside, being swaddled firmly can actually help them feel like they're back in the uterus and that can make them feel safe again. And also babies, all of us will have reflexes. And so the startle reflex can often um, help to, if that is, is contained within a lovely, you know, firm swaddle, it just makes the babies feel that they can be relaxed and less, you know, exposed. So that's generally why swaddling helps in those first, you know, first few weeks. And what about, what does a baby wear? What do we dress our baby in? Sure, so initially after birth, what I'm all about is skin to skin. So having that time with mum and then partner, just a nappy, maybe a beanie and keep those babies on your chest is a really great start. And then, you know, in the hospital, you may find that the babies may be comfortable wearing a little singlet and a grow suit. I think, you know, again, for safe sleeping environments, you don't want them to be wearing beanies, um, but you know, you will start to get to know and feel how warm they are. Um, but generally a singlet and a grow suit, a swaddle and a small blanket is a really good start. Yeah. What are your favorite settling techniques, Narelle? So if we've, had, we've got a little newborn and you know, we're, we're just lapping them up and in trying to read their cues and understand what their needs are and we think that they're tired, what are some different ways that we can help to try and settle them? Okay. I think my most, my most favorite one is being on their parents. <laughs> you can wear your children. You cannot spoil a newborn baby. They want to be close to you. They know your heartbeat, their voices, your smells. If they feel close to you, they will relax and feel secure. So holding them close, whether that's wearing them in around with a lovely, you know, baby wrap initially, that's a really great way to do it. Or have them in your arms is absolutely fine for a new baby. That's, that's their safe place. So I sort of find that, you know, having them close to you, movement can help. Um, there's lots of different options here, but you know, just keep going in your normal life. You don't need to tiptoe around a baby. A babies mostly love white noise. They like hearing things. And if they know that you're close by, they relax. I'm very much into um, recommending that, that couples read to their babies really early on. You know, initially, you know, when they get home from the hospital because they know your voices and when they know that you're close, they relax. So it's okay to hold and love and carry your newborn babies as a really great form of settling. And it's sort of instinctive just to start swaying, I sort of found, you know. I think everyone picks up a baby and just starts sort of swaying and shushing. You know, yeah. it's a bit of an instinct, isn't it, for settling? Yeah, trust your instincts. Yeah, definitely. And so I guess our last question is about managing visitors. And do you have any advice on this? Sure. So again, post lockdown, a lot of hospitals now have reopened visiting hours. Uh, I'm very much uh, a... As a midwife, I'm very much an advocate for my couples in saying that whatever is comfortable for mama, especially in her recovery from birth, uh, is really important and, and making sure that the partners are kind of being like the security people. If you don't want to receive visitors in hospital, you do not have to. Uh, I think when visitors arrive and they're so excited and they want to hear all about your birth and you are absolutely exhausted, still trying to navigate feeding a baby, holding a baby, it's overwhelming. So don't put pressure on yourselves, guys. Just relax. And if you don't want to receive visitors in hospital, you can say no. And I think if you have friends that have 
got children, they will probably not come to hospital because they know how overwhelming it is. And when you are home, again, I want you to hibernate for at least six weeks. I want you to just feel like you can receive visitors on your terms. And if visitors want to come, I want them always to text partner first and say, is it a good day? And then for the partner to then be able to say to mama, what do you think? Rather than her feeling so much pressure to say, oh, okay, because visitors, and I do love them, they don't stay for five minutes. They stay longer. And most importantly, if they're planning to visit you, they need to bring food. <laughs> they need to bring um, snacks. They need to bring love and they need to bring support. Visitors are the best that can do a load of laundry, can, can sweep, can vacuum, can to look after you. So choose visitors wisely and say no if it doesn't suit you. Don't feel pressure. That's brilliant advice. Thank you so much, Narelle, for joining us on the podcast today. And a big thank you to Miss Stella for sponsoring this episode. Next week on the podcast, we have our paediatrician expert, Dr. Lexi Frydenberg, talking all about newborn care. You've been listening to the Parents You've Got This podcast, the expert guide to parenthood. And never forget, parents, you've, you've got, got this. this. Join a Parents You've Got This masterclass today to be prepared, excited and educated for pregnancy, birth, baby and parenthood. Visit www.parentsyouvegotthis.com.au and sign up for a masterclass today.